to focus on youth for building a narrative about tribal rights in India. We have initiated a series of internship under this project, which is a step towards spreading awareness. Today, we have with us Shri P. Narahari sir, who hails from uh, Kareem Nagar, Telangana, a senior IAS officer, currently managing director, Madhya Pradesh, State Cooperative Marketing Federation, Commissioner Food Safety and Controller, Food and Drugs Administration, Government of Madhya Pradesh, Secretary and Commissioner at Public Relations Department, Government of Madhya Pradesh. Sir is one of the few servants, civil servants, who use social media platforms to interact with citizens to solve their problems, and the problems raised on the wall are automatically directed to concerned departments. Sir is the author of five books, one of those is Who Owns Mao, and also a lyricist and wrote the song Ho Halla, which was sung by singer Shan. Sir was recognized as 10 most aspiring IAS officers of year 2017 by the Better India. Respected Sir is the maker of Ladevi Lakshmi Yojana, who later inspired Beti Bachao Beti Padhao Yojana. In 2020, Sir started the program of Swachhata Ke Sir under Swach Bharat Abhyan to make people aware, which include Bollywood singer Shan Shankar Mahadevan, Javed Ali, and others. Additionally, we are delighted to have Sir as our patron for Project Eklavya also. In today's session, Sir will guide us on the way of making policies and tribal laws in the country. So, sir, can we start the discussion with your permission? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Bhavya, for the introduction. Uh, it's always great to be part of uh, Think India and Tribal Rights Forum. And thanks uh, for inviting me to interact with uh, uh, future policymakers and current thinkers of this uh, esteemed uh, organization so i'm just going to my the topic that i've been given uh, for today is on policy making that is public policy making uh, so i'll i'll, I'll speak about um, my own experiences some theoretical aspects and some practical aspects pertaining to policy making uh, pardon me for not um, actually focusing on the tribal rights related issues but i'm definitely going to talk about uh the most uh one of the most uh successful schemes of uh, madhya pradesh uh, that is largely lakshmi yojana and i have uh, uh, been part of the entire uh, policy making that is this scheme uh, which was uh, made in 2007 has been uh, has inspired 15 more than 15 states to copy this scheme and uh, make their own uh, uh, schemes uh, on similar lines. Uh, the one of the five books that has been mentioned is about the making of Ladli Lakshmi Yojana. So some of the contents of that book I am going to present here. And recently I have come up with another. I have just released another book called Betia, uh, which is again on the on on the uh, uh, on the successful scheme of Ladli Lakshmi Yojana. How this scheme has been has inspired many a number of states and how one single scheme actually has enabled the birth of many girl children in this country uh, more than 30 lakh ch girl children were born in madhya pradesh alone uh, who are who are part of uh, who are beneficiaries of this ladni lakshmi yojana and i'm very proud to be part of this entire scheme and last 13 to 14 years this scheme has uh, won many accolades and many a number of um, scholars have done uh, doctorate on this particular scheme. Uh, so I'll be talking about policy making um, uh, while parallelly talking about how uh, Ladli Lakshmi Yojana as a policy, how we prepared that policy, how this scheme was actually uh, introduced. So uh, for uh, students of, um, uh, I mean, uh, students of policy making, uh, future policy makers, I feel. Uh, this is going to be really, really useful. Uh, to Before beginning, uh, I would like to mention that there is a small correction in my designation. I'm currently holding the charge as Commissioner of Food Safety and Controller of Food and Drug Administration. Only a month back, I was 
suddenly brought in to manage the oxygen and medicines in Madhya Pradesh. So I'm currently handling that job along with being the managing director of Mark Uh So this is another uh, very important and challenging time that we are all uh, facing. And this is unprecedented kind of time wherein we are seeing a sudden surge of um, corona cases and uh, people are really uh, suffering. And then apart from that, there is huge, huge uh, deficiency pertaining to oxygen, medicines, and uh, uh, hospital infrastructure and the other things. So uh, I feel this is an opportune moment. I, I keep telling my uh, officers uh, in the department uh, how uh, we need to make certain policies at this point of time so that in future, uh, at least whenever there's going to be a pandemic of this kind, uh, how we can handle a similar situations. So I'm going to talk some of these things also. So I request all of you to stay safe and follow all the uh, COVID protocols so that you uh, don't get affected. And um, uh, uh, and also you yourself and your family members are all fine. So your mic is on mute. Yeah. How long has this been suddenly just now? Yes, sir. Hope uh, my earlier content was uh, audible. Yes. Okay, that's good. So what is a policy? A policy is a deliberate system of principles to guide decisions um, uh, and achieve rational outcomes. A policy is a statement of intent and is implemented as a procedure or protocol. So policy is a way of actually, um, uh, it is simple as simple to say that you, you are at crossroads and you need to go to a particular destination. So you need, a, uh, you need some route, some, um, some direction to go uh, from X to Y. Y is your destination, X is where you are. Similarly, in the governmental systems or even in private places, a big organization, there has to be a policy that needs to guide everybody so that you achieve uh, certain results. Uh, policies, uh, policy or uh, a uh, plan um, of action agreed or chosen by a political party, a business, etc., the present government's policy on education. So policy is something uh, which is countable, unaccountable, but it's something which is there. there it could be a written or uh, a not uh, really in written format. Then we come to public policy. So what, uh, especially when it, uh, when the same kind of policy is actually uh, brought into governmental systems to solve certain problems. There is a problem, there is an issue uh, which needs to, uh, or there is, a, there, is a, there, is, there is a problem statement which needs to be actually uh, concerning uh, some aspect or the other. So there, need to be a, there needs to be a public policy. And uh, these policies can be political, economic, cultural, social in nature. Uh, for example, traffic violations. So, if what happens if somebody is violating traffic rules? So there has to be a policy. You cannot just like that pick somebody and say that you have violated a, a traffic rule. So where is the rule then? So the rule which is actually uh, been violated by a citizen, it has to be somewhere written and it has to have a, a legality or a sanction. Then only uh, you can actually um, fine a particular person for violating traffic rules. So public policy is a combination of laws, regulations, and so on. Uh, public policy can be defined as a course of action the government takes in response to an issue or problem. Rules ensuring that businesses offer safe products to con consumers are part of a nation's regulatory policy. So public policy is something pertaining to public. 
a private uh, there could be policies everywhere it be, there could be policies in government private sector everywhere but when it comes to public policy it affects the citizens it is pertaining to beneficiaries uh, who are citizens it is pertaining to public at large so the governments come into picture so if the government has to uh, step in and resolve an issue or make rules or regulations or laws then it is a public policy so there are various steps in policy making um, uh, these are the four things that i feel are most relevant that there has to be an agenda setting and problem definition first of all there has to be an agenda setting that means there has to be an agenda actually for in order to have in order to create a policy you need to have a problem first there has to be some agenda for making a policy so first you need to uh, identify the problem and uh, then agenda setting has to take place and the problem has to be defined what what exactly is the problem Uh, for which you need to make a policy second is policy formulation and adoption so the next step is once you are clear about what is your agenda setting and problem definition then you start working on the policy uh, formulation and you know and you adopt certain rules principles and whatever you need to there are certain fixed ways of actually uh, policy formulation so once the policy formulation adoption is done then you actually go for policy implementation so the scheme or the program the policy the yojana uh, actually it goes to the next phase that is policy implementation and finally evaluation once you start implementing the policy maybe maybe after a month or after a period of 6 months to 1 year or maybe 2 years or there are some policies which pertain into education uh healthcare they take a lot of time so maybe 5 years 10 years so you do the pro- policy evaluation and then if you feel that the policy needs to be um uh the amended or they need to make changes or you uh, need to do something uh, uh, on the basis of uh, evaluation you then 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 take necessary um action so as i said agenda setting and problem definition so the first step in policy making is to gain a um, place on the public policy agenda uh, uh first you need to understand determine that there is a problem now it's a public issue so uh, there are some problems which get defined as public issues and others are not you know because there are all kinds of uh problems in the governmental system so i am i am going to talk on the governmental system policy making in governmental system so there are certain issues which are pertaining to the public then there are others for example if a policy is being made on let us say uh, conduct rules of civil servants so the conduct rules of civil servants is pertaining to civil servants it's nothing to do with public actually but there are some problems which are public issues if it is a uh, issue pertaining to traffic violation is a public issue so you need to clearly sp- understand what kind of policy actually you are looking at is the policy pertaining to public or it is pertaining to uh, your own government employees or it's going to be let's say there is a policy pertaining to uh, what should be the salary that the uh, member of legislative assembly mla should receive so it's nothing to do with public actually at large it's a policy pertaining to salaries of the um, mlas so it is a particular section of the uh, elected representatives so who are few in number so it is not a public policy even though it is an issue of discussion for public but it is not a public uh, policy related issue so framing is at the heart of this process so you need to start framing um, things on the basis of uh, the agenda setting and working on it so this is a very very important um uh this is a very very important diagram that i'm showing um uh, which is very importantly known as the policy window so uh, this this policy window is very important in the sense uh, it, uh, when it comes to public policy because uh, you you cannot uh, start working on a policy uh when there is no need when there is no such 
um, requirements when then nobody is asking you to make a policy or a, uh, there is no such issue pertaining to public that you need to create a policy for that so it is very very important that the policy window has to be open in order that you actually start working on a public policy so now why why this diagram is important in the sense that uh, if the policy window is closed so even if you work on a particular policy now it's not going to be passed uh, it's not going to take shape because nobody is asking for it so in governmental systems it is very very important that a public policy window has to be open so for which there has to be a pub problem stream so there is there should be a problem there should be some some issue uh, so from somewhere or the other it should emanate uh, like i was telling you about uh, let's say the covid crisis that we are seeing so i was telling that now the policy window pertaining to the corona crisis is open because people are suffering it is the only agenda of the government so the politics stream is also very keen that let's let's make some uh, policies which can ensure that the public who are really suffering uh, they can uh, uh, be given some kind of respite so what are the policies so i tell my people in my organization that let's work on all those issues which we wanted to do and we wanted to create Uh, certain important rules and regulations and we wanted to bring some dramatic and drastic changes uh, pertaining to the drug administration food and drug administration let's do it now because the policy window is open so for every public policy to be made there has to be a policy window which needs to be open and that is when the uh, the politics stream that is the power problem stream that is from the public or from the civil societies from everywhere or even the thinkers or intellectuals the policy stream people who are part of the policy stream everybody understands that now this is the time so everybody says let's let's uh, make a policy so a policy takes shape when there is a policy window which is open so parallelly i'm going to talk about as i mentioned to you that uh the scheme pertain into largely lakshmi yojana so when i joined uh, in 2006 as the project director of icds integrated child development scheme um, in uh, women and child development department of madhya pradesh at bhopal so at uh, at that time it, it the issue that was uh, a discussion was uh, the dwindling child sex ratio in madhya pradesh so what happened in uh, in 2001 after 2001 census madhya pradesh sex ratio was 919 in the child sex ratio that is a 0 to 4 age group uh, the sex ratio of madhya pradesh was higher than tamil nadu but lower than andhra pradesh uh, the uh, when the, the the child sex ratio when it was projected on 2001 census for the year 2006 11 26 it projected decreasing trend and it was moving to an alarming 892 so the child sex ratio when uh, the 2000 cens one census uh, when the issue, when the when the uh, results of the 2001 census started pouring in the government suddenly became worried about the dwindling uh, girl children uh, the the child sex ratio dwindling and it was creating an alarming situation wherein the number of girl children uh, to were in um, in comparison to the boys was really going to be uh, much lesser uh, with years to come so this is <clears throat> this is the problem so what what the, this is the this is the problem and that is when uh, the chief minister of madhya pradesh uh, uh, called the women and child development department principal secretary commissioner myself uh, the project director and said that this is the problem so that means when the um, uh, when the census data when the political stream and the intellectual stream and the public suddenly started realizing that the sonography machines which were introduced in 90s uh when which were introduced in 90s um 
to ensure that there are no chromosomal uh, uh, deficiencies, differences in the yet to be born fetus, the, the sonography machine was supposed to check if there are any such chromosomal disorders or any such disorders of a fetus to be born. So any correction has to be done. Uh, it has to be done at that particular point of time. So this uh, sonography machines, which were introduced in 90s, uh, became um, one of the reasons for uh, sex determination and female feticide. So the result of this introduction of these uh, sonography machines uh, was seen in the 2001 census when the child sex ratio uh, started dwindling. So that is when the governments realized that we need to do an intervention. So I said that there was a problem, there was a policy window was open. So when the policy window is open, that is when the, uh, the civil servants, uh, the elected representatives, and the, the society, civil societies, everybody starts speaking about it. So the agenda setting was done and the problem was understood that we must reduce this, uh, we must keep a tab on the reduction of uh, uh, the, the child sex ratio. The dwindling uh, girl children needs to be addressed, the issue needs to be addressed. So we need to bring in a policy. So that is when the policy formulation and adoption, the next stage uh, started uh, happening. So once an issue is on the agenda, policies are then formulated and ideally adopted. This stage involves analyzing policy goals, creating or identifying possible solutions and weighing the alternatives. It also involves elected officials, committee staffers, upon political appointees or agency officials, that is the stakeholders. So in the case of Lardley Lakshmi Yojana, what happened? The state government, as I told, they took it very seriously and we were given this job. And I, along with one of my colleagues, DK Sharma, we went to Tamil Nadu and from Tamil Nadu, we went to, uh, we came back, we went to Haryana, Punjab, we toured, extensively toured Madhya Pradesh, some of the very severely affected uh, districts, like, uh, areas like Gwalior and Chambal, where the uh, child sex ratio was much, much lower than other parts of Madhya Pradesh itself. So we took all the data, we collected the data, we spoke to many a number of people, we uh, interacted with intellectuals, with the with the society, with the stakeholders, uh, the doctors, organizations, uh, gynecologists. Uh, sonography, uh, sonographers, uh, then uh, the elected representatives, especially there was a Maila Panchayat which was organized, wherein women from all the sections of the society were brought in. They were asked to speak about this dwindling sex ratio. What are the reasons for dwindling sex ratio? Why girl children are uh, less girl children are born? What is happening? What is this missing girl children issue? Who is responsible for this? So. Uh, 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 it was a it was a huge huge stakeholder conference and uh, meetings and on the basis of various inputs that we got uh, from this particular um, uh, for, from this particular um, um, conferences and meetings so we also interacted with different departments um, so senior level officials. So we, we now understood where the problem is. And then we initially drafted a scheme uh, and it was uh, sent for feedback to all the district collectors, CEO Zilla Panchayat for their suggestions. Uh, many a number of people were told to um, uh, give their feedback that if we are going to implement this particular scheme, how is it going to be actually? Uh, uh, is it going to be really making a difference in the society? Is it going to really help the society in accepting girl children, uh, in enabling girl children to be born? So, so this is how the entire policy formulation and adoption took place. And once the policy was 
framed, it was presented before the Honorable Chief Minister and it was accepted. And 1st of April 2007, the policy took shape and it was started implementing. So this is the third stage of policy making. The chosen solutions are implemented by organizations charged with carrying them out. So at this stage, administrators make decisions about how to deploy people, money, resources in order to translate a policy into action. So that is how the Ladli Lakshmi Yojana started uh, rolling down to all the districts. And in Ladli Lakshmi Yojana, 30,000 rupees worth um, uh, the postal uh, bonds are issued in the name of the girl child who is born. And once she is 18 years old, till 18 years, the girl child will not be allowed to um, uh, encash those uh, policy bonds. And uh, in between, at the when she is five, when she um, uh, passes out of fifth class, she gets a, a, a x amount of sum. When she passes eighth class, she gets another x y amount of sum. When she passes 10th class, she gets another Z amount of uh, sum. And when she is in, after crossing uh, 18 years of time, if she, she cannot marry before she is 18 years old, and if anybody is actually marrying before 18 years of age, the entire amount will come back to the government. If a girl child is, um, let, let's say by, because of any reason she is, uh, she dies, the, the entire amount goes back to the government. And it is important and compulsory for the girl child to appear for 12th class exam in order to encash that money. So the life cycle approach of a girl child is taken into account at different stages of her education. And when she is a 12th, uh, she is appeared for 12th class exam, and when she is more than 18 years old, she gets a sum of money. When she is 21 years, she gets about more than 1.25 lakh amount in her name. So this is the policy implementation which started happening. Now the last one is a policy evaluation. This is the final stage of policy making. In this stage, policymakers assess what happened as a result of a policy and make adjustments as needed. And I and as uh, uh, I was um, as I told you, I was the original author of this particular scheme, and later on I went on to become collector in a district called Sivni. So when I was collector Sivni, I got um, that was almost two years after the implementation of the scheme. I got a policy. Uh, I got um, evaluation of the scheme done in Sivni district, and I sent the results to the state government saying that. How encouraging are the results? Uh, how the state gone? Uh, how the policy on uh, girl children, Lardly Lakshmi Yojana, is enabling the birth of girl children? How parents who used to think that girl child is a uh, is kind of a burden on them um, uh, started accepting the girl child as their own, and uh, how the Women and Child Development Department is actually. Uh, through, through publicity and through Anganwadi system has been able to establish the system. So I got an evaluation done and similarly the state government also got many a number of evaluations done about this scheme. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned to you that this scheme has been copied by more than 15 states by different names. Uh, you can, uh, as I mentioned to you, I recently um, have been able to uh, publish a book on uh, uh, Betia, that is uh, how this scheme um, has enabled the birth of girl children and nearly 30 lakh girl children got benefited in Madhya Pradesh alone. And uh, there are like 15 states have copied this particular scheme and I don't know what is the total number. So in this book on Betty, I have delineated each and every name of each and every scheme by each and every state and how they have uh, copied in total or made changes to the scheme 
and I've actually been able to um, uh, enable uh, this, this scheme, uh, enable the birth of girl children in the entire country. Uh, so when I was, when I was collector, uh, Gwalior, where, as I told, there was this um, female feticide, sex determination and female feticide was very rampant. I took more corrective measures there. And uh, there also I got a policy evaluation done. And I'm very happy to say that um, the results of 2021, because we didn't have a census recently because of the COVID crisis, but the there have been encouraging results in 2011. The, the child sex ratio, uh, instead of declining, started increasing. And I'm very sure that the 2021 census, which will be conducted, <clears throat> which is going to be a digital census, uh, we will see that in Madhya Pradesh, definitely the child sex ratio is going to be much, much better. And it has definitely put a curb on uh, sex determination, female feticide, and all those issues. So this is how a policy uh, is framed. This is how a policy is actually, a policy takes shape and a policy is made. So there could be many a number of uh, such policies which are made in governmental systems. So this is how basically uh, a policy is formulated and, and, and implemented in any state government. So state or central government. So it's a, it's, it's a, it all depends on uh, how much time, energy you put into a policy making. Like the Ladli Lakshmi Yojana, uh, it was one full year. Uh, um, it took one full year for us to actually uh, make this policy because uh, of the consultative process that is involved. The stakeholders uh, need to be involved at different levels. There were many field visits. Uh, the societal approach towards girl children uh, need to be assessed, analyzed, understood. Uh, so it, it took a lot of time for us to actually frame a policy. So a policy, if it is well framed, if it is well thought about, uh, if the time and energy that goes into the uh, policy formulation or framing is, if the time, if it is given enough time, it com comes out as a very sound policy. Uh, after about three to four years of um, framing of this policy, Madhya Pradesh government made Ladi Lakshmi scheme into an act is, uh, so that no government will ever change the policy. So a policy can become an act also. So that is another uh, achievement of this public, uh, this policy on girl child, girl children. Uh, uh, there are several, uh, as I mentioned to you, many a number of uh, scholars have actually done PhD on this particular uh, subject, on the single scheme, how it has uh, enabled the birth of girl children and about what about a positive impact in the society. Okay, that's from my side. Uh, any questions, anything that you wish to know, I'll be happy to answer. Yeah, any questions? Yeah. Uh, hello, sir. Can you hear me properly? Yeah, yeah, yes. yes. Okay, okay. So, so thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for this interesting session. And sir, sir so uh, I have gone through that entire session. And just one thing that is coming to my mind is that, sir, when we design a policy, right? So usually this is a this is a team task. We work in a particular team, and the policy that we design per se, and when we see the population, right? When we see the sample size, like there's a some kind of population, right? There's a population 50, 100, 200, 300 people for whom we are designing a particular policy. Now there is not one mind. There's a group of people who are working, right? And we have also seen that uh, over the time, uh, over the time, policies must get reviewed, must get, uh, you know, uh, like reframed. I mean, as per demand of time, as per as per uh, as per demand of the resources and whatever. So, sir, when we work in a team, we have often see that the entire effort fallen prey to group think, right? Or so when we work in a group, when we work as a take two, three, four, five people for 
a population for a set of people how we can avoid this how we can come up with a holistic approach of making a policy right where 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 we can you know avoid these bottlenecks so uh, the best way to actually um, it's a good question so in a policy making it uh, you need to divide the uh, problem statement initially the first stage of uh, uh, that i mentioned to you in case of a in case of a um, agenda setting so is when you have set the agenda you make a problem statement so when you make the problem statement you need to divide that problem statement into parts so uh, let's say um, for example now i'm handling this oxygen management of madhya pradesh so i was suddenly brought in on 8th of april they said that you need to manage with the team so uh, we there were other officers who were part of the team so we were we were about seven, uh, six to seven IAS and IPS officers who are brought in. Uh, so we have a additional chief secretary rank officer above us. So we sat down together and we understood the problem. So we need oxygen, about 700 metric tons of oxygen in order to cater to all the uh, oxygen, ICU and oxygen patients. So then that was a problem, bringing oxygen to Madhya Pradesh. So then we defined the, the state, the, we defined the problem. So the problem statement had various stages in it. That is demand of oxygen. So we made one team which will work on the demand of demand management. Then transportation. So once we know the demand, we need to transport oxygen on the basis of the demand. So there was a transportation team which was brought, which was uh, among the officers, we divided the work. And then the supply, once the transportation is done, there has to be proper supply because Madhya Pradesh is a huge state with 52 districts. And in those 52 districts, there are N number of uh, hospitals, uh, depending on the patient size. So, so we created a supply team. Then distribution, finally, it has to be distributed judiciously. So then we created a distribution team. So in this way, a demand generation, a transportation, a supply, and a distribution. So we divided amongst ourselves that who, I mean, officers will be working on all these issues. So the most important thing for any successful project, program, policy is how better you divide uh, the problem statement further into doable or actionable uh, set of activities and you do a work distribution amongst your team members and each of them will work on those issues and again the team will sit together will analyze uh, the suggestions the recommendations or uh, whatever um, uh, each one each one of the uh, team members has to say and on the basis of such suggestions and recommendations finally uh the 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 team decides that we will go in this direction so wherever the problem statement is not further divided into actionable uh, activities then again you will be ending up in a in a policy or a program or a scheme which is not going to be functional or doable or it's not going to be a successful project Yeah. Any other question? Any anybody wants to know? There is a question in the chat box. It's from hmm. Arjun. Sir, if a policy is targeted towards a particular sector, like any policy for commercial or industrial sector, would it be considered as a public policy or not? It will be considered as a public policy. See any any sector uh, any sector related policy also will be considered to be a public policy <clears throat> let's say um, uh, industrial promotion if we are creating a policy on industrial promotion so the industrial promotion or somebody establishing a large scale industry uh, a medium or uh, small scale industry 
uh, still it is relevant to everybody. Anybody can establish an industry. Uh, so it is still a public policy. It is still a public policy. So I want to ask one question. So uh, when we go about making a policy, so the important thing is writing down the suggestions, the solutions. So in the internship especially, the interns were facing problems in writing the suggestions as to how they must go by it and what is the right way uh, in the online system, especially where empirical research cannot be done. So what, uh, how can you go by in writing a suggestion in a policy? Uh, I'm really not sure actually, see, uh... See, your your kind of uh, the thing that you are mentioning is not a, it is not a, it is not a, it's not a public policy related thing that you're talking about. You're talking about an assignment actually. So uh, when you are working on an assignment, you are only doing uh, some work on particular uh, aspect of um, or or a subject that you have been given. So when it comes to public policy, you need to have all those elements that I have mentioned. So either, either you first sit down to uh, write down that you want to create, you want to make a policy, and then you first write down the write down the problem statement. So once you write down the public the problem statement, then you start working on it. Then maybe you will be able to actually generate fruitful data. Uh, uh, on on the problem statement that you're working on. So if you take up any X, Y, Z, uh, an issue and start working on it, it may not end up giving you good results. So first of all, you need to, you need to have in front of you an agenda, a problem statement before you, and then you start working on it. The, maybe that will give you, um, and then, then, uh, when you start working on it, then you will generate more questions, um, more set of questions within that particular problem statement. Maybe that will actually uh, make your work more uh, fruitful and uh, result oriented. Okay, sir. So there is a question from this name. For creating a policy in a country like India, where a large population lives in Popularization. How should a policy be approached? If a policy harms the marginalized sections, but it benefits the corporate sector, which contributes to the economy in the greater way, how should a balance be maintained? See, uh, a policy. Uh, see, any government is never generally never thinks about benefiting a particular section of the society. It is always um a policy is always um uh, multi-dimensional in nature it it tries to ensure a government policy at least will always try to see to it that it is having a balanced approach towards the uh, all sections of the society and it is while benefiting one section of the society it should never uh, be um, unbeneficial or it should not be detrimental to other sections of the society. So such a policy is uh, not a good policy. If at all it is made, it is not a good policy. Definitely, there have been many such occasions, like let's say the land acquisition policy of 1898. The land acquisition policy of 1898 was uh, detrimental towards uh, some sections of the society. So it was uh, repealed. A new policy was brought in in 2009-10. A new policy on land acquisition was brought in 910, which gave more powers, more money, and uh, there was a rehabilitation aspect involved. Especially the uh, the one the land austies should get better benefits out of the uh, this whole land acquisition. So it was repealed. So a bad policy cannot sustain. Number one, a bad policy should not be made. Number two. Number three, any such policy, every policy, uh, at least I know, for example, the state governments or, go or government of India, always whenever the new policy is brought in, 
they publicize they publicize through media through social media through government website so uh, the public at large or civil societies or societies who are working for such people should see what kind of policies are being made and they should go and visit such sites download such draft and then send their comments uh, and approach in that fashion and i'm sure at least like i now i have uh, 20 years of experience in the state government at least now i can very well say that we want more and more public people stakeholders to actually come forward and give their comments now governments have become more accommodative in the sense that more and more uh, sections of society should actually know that such a policy is being made in the interest of the public and more opinion suggestions amendments are demanded from the public and the final rescue that we always take is if a bad, there is a bad policy then we should approach courts of law because in the courts of law a bad policy is always uh reviewed and if the if they if they if the changes needs to be made then the don then the courts order governments to make amendments or if the if it is totally unconstitutional then the such a policy is quashed so <clears throat> these are the various processes uh, checks and balances that we have in our system so there is another question to what extent the contribution is taken into consideration while framing laws by the legislature That's no i didn't it. understand this question what is you can speak up of judiciary where do you want to place the word nayak can, can the speak up? person who is asking the question um unmute and uh, explain to me what the question is like yeah sanjali you can speak now all right sir uh, so first of all thank you for the wonderful lecture and secondly my question was uh, so to what extent is the contribution of judiciary taken into consideration while the laws are framed by the legislature secondly uh, we also see that in the legislature people are uh, the people who are the framers of law are often the representative of majority so in that condition how how can that is your majority of any law for instance in uttar pradesh it was like the recent uh, policy that was framed by the yogi adityanath's government was regarding the love jihad and the marriage policy so how can as a bureaucrat uh, check that and initiate action uh, so that legislature can modify rectify and bring amendments third uh, like after uh, the policy is framed and suppose it has now it is now an act so uh, it acts as a literal rule of interpretation for the judiciary so uh, to what uh, what upper hand judiciary have to change those wordings and uh, modify it uh modify it as per the uh, as per the instrumentalities of the case and hence forth deliver as per the essence of the act see i have mentioned to you that see the um the way our democratic systems work uh, we need to understand uh the state governments have the power to actually make laws so the state governments uh, make laws and while the state governments make any kind of law they are bound to work um, within the framework of the constitution of india so let's take the love jihad uh, policy uh, framework that has happened uh, to my best of knowledge again such a law has been brought in such a policy decision has been taken uh, within the uh, within the uh, framework of the constitution of india number one number two there has been a consultative process 
the state governments do consultative process. I told you that they, they must have invited uh, objections or 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 uh, suggestions when such a policy is being made. And then, uh, what is the role of bureaucracy? The civil servants. What is their role? Civil servants' role is to ensure that any policy that is being made is 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 within the is within the framework of the constitution of india so uh, uh, the civil servants ensure that uh, they uh, they approach uh, advocate general or uh, legal luminaries are approached uh, the best of the uh, lawyers are approached to ensure to check whether a, a particular policy which is taking shape or becoming a law uh, is it not is it uh, going to be uh, within the framework of the constitution or with, is it going to actually uh, contravene any of the sections uh, given in the constitution so these things are taken care looked after by the civil servants who are actually preparing the draft and uh, uh, finally uh, again the point that you are uh, which i am trying to understand repetitively is that when it goes to uh, when it goes to the legislature but that is in the assembly, let us say the legislative assembly. It is it is not whether the legislative assembly is going to vote on the lines of majority or minority. Uh, the uh, the way in which our, our legislature works is that, that in the assembly, if it is passed by a majority vote, still it becomes a law. So here the majority or minority doesn't come into picture. Now <clears throat> I'm sure. Like in Madhya Pradesh, a similar law was brought in. In Uttar Pradesh also, this love jihad related issue was brought in. So it has, I, as far as I understand, it has been questioned in the uh, court of law. And the court of law that is in the, uh, in the, in the high courts, uh, I'm not sure whether it has gone to uh, Supreme Court or not. But as far as I understand, all these laws have been upheld by the judiciary. So we need to understand that there, there, it has any law uh, has to cross all the stages uh, that are uh, in existence, or we have a very good checks and balances system. So the checks and balances system that is existent in our, um, in, um, in our way of doing of things in our democratic system, uh, have actually been able to work on all those things. So I feel that we need to uh, understand the way in which our systems work. So uh, while uh, we, we, we try to definitely make many a number of laws in this country, uh, uh, there are always going to be uh, the other sides of any law. The classic example of uh, law in our country that I always quote is uh, the anti-dowry law. So there is a law, there is an anti-dowry law, and uh, it is uh, legally uh, penalizing, and it is legally um, uh, uh, legally a person who is actually demanding dowry can be taken to court of law. Now how much is actually, how much is it working? How much is it actually being used, or how much is it uh, uh, is being abused? So there are many questions to every uh, implementation of every law, and that's what I say that when it comes to policy making, governments need to actually evaluate, do a periodic evaluation of this of any such public policy, and they have to review such uh, policies, such laws, and that's that also happens. So. Uh, it is. It all again boils down to uh, public, civil societies, and the citizenry. How, how uh, informed is the uh, citizenry? How informed are the civil societies? How much are the civil societies actually uh, sitting on uh, such uh, policies, evaluating them, and approaching their legisl legislators or their MLAs or members of parliament and going to going back and telling them that this law that you have made is creating these kind of situations. Why don't you amend this law? Why don't you actually bring changes in this law? 
so it all depends on how the civic society civil societies the citizenry or the common man or the affected person is actually questioning the um, such laws so i feel a healthy democracy is a, is one wherein uh, such uh, any such law which is made in, in our uh, in our states or country should be periodically evaluated and necessary amendments brought in So there is a question in the chat box from Chinmay. Oh no, sorry, Kaushal. Uh, so can non-bureaucrats indulge in policy framing? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's what I said. That uh, governments call uh, whenever there is a draft. First, there will be a draft, a policy which is prepared. There will be a draft, and such a draft is actually put forth in the public domain. and uh, uh, suggestions objections <clears throat> or any such amendments to that draft are invited so anybody who wants to be part of a policy making you should always see uh, the government website uh, and you will find many such uh, uh, new draft uh, policies are actually uh, put in public domain and you can really go through and make uh, come and write your comments against each and every clause and send it to uh, the email address uh, which is given on such a on a sub, such a public domain and i'm very sure at least uh, having worked in the government system now any such suggestion by anybody any citizen is if if the comments are relevant if they make little bit of sense and it is backed by little bit of uh, logic is always taken into consideration question so prashant you want to ask yes please yeah please go ahead yeah uh, first of all first of all sir thank you very much for this wonderful session uh, sir my doubt is hope you definitely listened about the ashman bharat one of the successful scheme of launched by our indian government in 2018 but i want to share that it is impl implemented in my village from 2020 onwards so i would like to ask whether making a good policy is enough or how we will implement is also one of the important perspective of policy making yeah it is uh, it is like um yeah you all young guys it is like always uh, like you know wanting to get married and have children and you know you want to have good children and then once you have children how you bring up those children so a policy making is like wanting to have good children but to have a very good child and who is who is who is in all form in in, in every form he is competent is good depends on how you actually bring him up or bring her up so the policy implementation is equally or i would say more important than the policy formulation itself but if the policy formulation is, is takes into consideration each and every aspect even when it is going to be implemented let's say the when the, in, in the implementation process you can if you are able to have that vision and if you are able to foresee what kind of problems might crop in when the implementation is going to take place and if you are able to in, in, include such issues even when the policy is being formulated maybe in the implementation stage you will have lesser issues or lesser problems so one should have that vision and that's why i always say no policy should be made in a hurry no policy should be hurried up to say that it should be no policy should be brought in one month two months time any policy has to take its 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 uh, it, its uh, logical time uh, uh, in the formulation it should take enough time and all stakeholders everybody who is actually part of the scheme uh, the the beneficiary also tomorrow's beneficiary should also be able to evaluate what kind of benefit he or she is going to get from a policy so the government should reach out to such wider sections of society 
uh, when policy formulation is taking place. And once the policy is formulated, the, 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 the implementation is also very, very important. And uh, uh, like I told you that Aishman Bharat, you have rightly mentioned, is one of the very, very comprehensive uh, uh, schemes pertaining to uh, ensuring, um, uh, I mean, access to medicines, access to healthcare infrastructure in our country. Uh, and there are states, there are states who actually, despite um, this policy being brought in, there are states who did not implement to three, four years. Uh, and they took their own time in implementation. Uh, they took implement, they took time because they didn't want to politically, didn't want to actually make it clear that, you know, they want to implement a particular policy by a particular government at the center. But what I am saying is that anything which is going to affect public at large is going to be extremely, extremely beneficial, should be rolled out immediately. And then amendment should be made, if at all there has to be, uh, if there are some changes need to be brought in so that public at large uh, should really be benefited out of such scheme. Yes, so I think uh, we must now end the session. Thank you so much, sir, for enlightening us on the the most important topic that is policy making as to what is policy, how we can make it, how the steps to go by in making the policy. And uh, there is uh, one more thing which I wanted to ask yeah. as to what as students, as the, uh, at this stage, what can we contribute from our side to the policy making process? See, I want to always say that um, um, uh, 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 one has to learn uh, during student or college days. Uh, that's a very, very important aspect of um, uh, one has to actually understand. Uh, I always mention the, this uh, story of mine to many a number of students that why I wanted to get into the Indian administrative services. So when I was in class 10, uh, the district collector of uh, my native place, uh, district called Karim Nagar, where uh, they, this collector was really good. And he brought in a, um, a scheme called Akshara Ujjwala, that is adult literacy program, which in Hindi we call Proud Shiksha Karikram. Or, you know, the, uh, making the elderly people who never went to school, make them learn, read and write. That is the scheme. So my school adopted a nearby village uh, on the directions of the district collector. And uh, I was the class leader. So uh, so we, I, I used to take all my classmates to that village after the school hours. And we used to gather all the elderly people who never went to school, who never studied. So we, we used to bring them and make them sit in the uh, community hall. And we used to teach them how to read and write. And in the process, I realized that you just you just can't you know tell them to read and write. You need to really motivate them. You need to actually create enthusiasm to actually make them learn. So we used to write some poems, some songs, some dance, drama, you know, all those activities as classmates we used to do. And in the whole process, uh, uh, for about a year when we did this we saw the results coming in, you know, the people, the elderly people were really write, reading and writing. They were really um, very happy that they are able to write letters to their, uh, their children, you know, or they are able to read a newspaper. So that is when I realized how important is uh, government, uh, uh, I mean, service, how a collector can, you know, bring in some kind of uh, work and make, huge impact in the society. So that's when I realized I'll also become collector one day and I'll also do some, some of these things like this. So if what I'm trying to say is that this is the best time as student, as a college goer or as a research scholar, never stick to, um, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, libraries or your classroom sessions or 
uh, in-house activities, always go into the public and try to learn from there. One of my most successful projects schemes that I've implemented uh, again is the Swachh Bharat Mission when I was collected in Indore. Indore became number one city when I was collected in Indore in 2016-17 and it's still for last four to five years still the most cleanest city in the country. So we made public involved, we made students involved, we make we made everybody believe that this program is for your, it's your program, it's not government program. A government program or a program which involves behavioral change Kevin can never sustain only if you are running a particular program uh, uh, as a government program. It will just fail. So what I always say is that become a volunteer. Go actually work as a volunteer. So when you start working as a volunteer, you will gain some experience while student, uh, while as a research scholar or you know while a college goer. So that will help you a lot in policy making, in policy formulation. You will understand what actually the problems arise when such a uh, program is being implemented. So various stakeholders, their participation, their non-participation, uh, you will also try to understand that why something is not working or why something is actually working in the field. So I always say that 50% of your time should be spent in the field and rest of the 50% um, in the paperwork, book work and all such things. Uh, so that is what I would uh, suggest you to do. Thank you so much, sir, for coming to the session. and. Enlightening, enlightening us all regarding the policy making and in the future of policy makers and all, always a good citizen of the nation as well. So I'd like to thank all the participants who have joined the session. I'd like to thank Shivam Raghuvanshi ji in charge of Think India, Pashtim Bengal. I want to thank Pratik Sudhar ji, National Convener, Think India, Aditya Kashyap, Aditya Kashyap ji, National Co-Convener, Think India, Shashank ji, Delhi in charge, Think India, and Pradyumna, for he is the in charge of Tribal Rights Forum Project Eklavya. So thank you so much, everyone. And uh, yeah, it's always a pleasure to be um, on your program and look forward yeah. to um, for more such interactions. I have shared my email ID and Twitter and also sharing my Facebook ID so that anybody wanting to actually learn more, know more, as such, I'm already a, a mentor for you know this activity of Think India and Tribal Rights Forum. But still, if you feel, if you feel, if you guys feel, you can always write to me. All the best. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so much, sir. Please fill the form, everyone, if you haven't yet filled. The interns. <laughs>